do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos hello friends in this video we will study the interfacing of the hex keyboard to the 8051 microcontroller first of all we will study that what is a keyboard how uh, what is the configuration of the keyboard what is the circuit for it and then we will see that how it is interfaced with the 8051 microcontroller its circuitry and its explanation so let us start with our topic So first of all what is a keyboard we know that keyboard it is an input device and this input device is used to give the input data to the microcomputers or the microcontrollers okay so it act as a human interfacing device interfacing means that the communication path okay so because if the humans they want to interface or communicate with the microcontrollers or microcomputers then how they are going to provide the data to the microcontrollers for that we use the keyboard okay so we can say that keyboard is a human oriented input peripheral human oriented because the humans are going to use it and input because the data is being given to the microcontroller or microcomputer and peripherals because it is an external device okay so how this keyboard is used this keyboard is used to input data so this keyboard is used to input the data or the program into the microcomputer or microcontrollers now this keyboard it consists of the push button type switches okay so in keyboard we know that we are having various keys okay so this when this key is pressed inside that key there are push buttons which are present and these push buttons they act as a switch so we can say that the keyboard it consists of so whenever the humans the user it is going to input the data it is going to press the key okay and that key is going to give a specific code to the microcontroller the microcontroller will identify that which key is being pressed and according to that key it is going to process the data okay so when a key is pressed the microcontroller identifies key depression and performs the appropriate operation so as i have said that the keyboard it consists of the push button type switches me and these push button type switches are present inside the key so whenever the key is pressed the push button is also pressed okay and that key is going to generate a code okay and that code is given to the microcontroller or microcomputer the microcontroller will decode that code and then perform the appropriate operation associated with that key so if we see the general operation of a keyboard here we will have a encoder
So you can see that in the keyboard, as I've said, there are push button type switches. So these are the keys. Okay. When this key is pressed, this push button is going to be closed. Okay. So it means that a key is pressed. So according to that key, an 8-bit character code will be generated. Okay. The key depression will be encoded into an 8-bit character code. This code will be given to the microcontroller and the microcontroller will decode that code and then it will identify that which key is be pressed and what operation it has to perform. So each time a key is pressed, a code is generated. and transmitted there is only one code associated with the key so it means that when this key is pressed an 8-bit code will be generated when this key is pressed then another 8-bit code will be generated so every key will have a one particular proper code associated with it so that when the microcontroller decode that code it is going to identify that this key is being pressed so for each key there is a one proper or one particular code for it In the micro uh, in the keyboard as I said that the keys they are in the form of the push button switches okay so each switch it is going to make an electrical contact when pressed okay so this is the push button when it is pressed it is in the form of the key so when it is pressed it is making an electrical contact okay so this circuit will be completed now when this circuit is being completed the output will be generated now this electrical contact it should be reliable it should be good and it should have a long life so this uh, electrical contact or we can say the metallic contract this is going to bounce few times okay so this metal contact when this switch is pressed then this metal contact is going to bounce few times because now when this contact is being connected there is an output okay we will get an output voltage here but if this metal contact is going to bounce again and again then this output voltage is going to fluctuate and due to this fluctuation there is a spike in the output signal And these spikes can be represented as So the output signal will be in the form of this. There will be spikes in the signal and these fluctuations are due to this metal contact which is bouncing back. 
okay so suppose that this is the metal contact this is going to touch when this key is pressed this is going to just fluctuate uh, or uh, repeat itself or uh, move at its position for some time so contact is made uh, then it is removed then made then removed and then it is made for a constant time so when it is uh, removed again and again the metal contact is bouncing at that time these uh, spikes are being produced when the key is continuously pressed then we are getting a constant voltage after that when this key after coming press when this key is released okay when our, we are removing our finger the key is again coming back to its position then this is the key depressed at that time also the metal contact is going to bounces back okay so it is the problem associated with the mechanical switches in which we are having a metal contact okay this bouncing problem is related with the mechanical switches okay and now uh, as in the keyboard we are having these mechanical switches the push button type uh, the mechanical switches are present so in keyboard also we are having this bouncing problem so for that the mechanism used to remove this is called the key debouncing okay now this key debouncing is done by two ways one is the hardware and other is the software that how the problem of this metal contact bounces a uh, bouncing again and again that can be removed it can be removed by hardware also and by software also and this process of removing this is called the key debouncing okay so let us first see the key debouncing by the hardware how the problem of this fluctuating output voltage can be removed okay so in this hardware key debouncing it is implemented with the help of a flip flop or latch okay so when the key is pressed with that key the associated circuit is going to consist of a flip flop or a latch rs flip flop is connected let's see the circuit for this So this hardware key debouncing it can be implemented with the help of this flip flop or a latch can be used okay now when this p the key is pressed okay it is going to make contact with the a okay one time it is making the contact with a at that time the output of the latch is will be high and when this metal contacts with the b then output of latch goes low so when it is at a output is high when it is at b the output is low okay now when this switch is between a and b the output is not going to fluctuate because it is the property of the latch that it is going to uh, store the value up till the next variation so here also when the 
switch is at A, then the output is high. When it is at B, the output is at low. So you can see that no debouncing is present. Debouncing means that in this way spikes are present okay so in the output signal no spikes are present either we will have the high value or the low value so the hardware debouncing is implemented with the help of flip-flop or a latch rs flip-flop or a latch can be used okay so between uh, at a the output is high at b the output is low and between a and b the output of the latch remains constant okay now second type of debouncing is the software key debouncing now software key debouncing it is implemented with the help of the program okay so in that the microcontroller it is going whenever any key is pressed so after the pressing of the key the microcontroller is going to wait for 20 milliseconds after 20 milliseconds it is going to check that whether the key is pressed or not if after 20 seconds again the key is found to be pressed then it is going to generate the code for that key and process the operation okay so there is a 20 milliseconds of time which the microcontroller check that is the key still pressed or not if the keys is still found to be pressed then that key will be processed so that is done with the help of the program so it comes under the software key debouncing so here let's see the flow chart First of all, it is going, the program is going to start, then it is going to read the keyboard. Then it is going to find that is key is pressed or not. Then there can be two condition either the key is pressed or the key is not pressed if it is not pressed then it is going to again read the keyboard okay after that if the key is pressed then there will be a delay of 20 milliseconds then it is going to again read the keyboard When it read the keyboard, it is going to check after that, that is key is still pressed. If yes, then accept the key. And return. If the key is not pressed, then again come to this step, again read the keyboard and check that is the key pressed or not, okay. So every time it is uh, the microcontroller is uh, encountering that a key is being pressed every time it is going to read the keyboard if the key is pressed it is going to provide a delay of 20 millisecond after 20 millisecond it is going to check that whether the keyboard is uh, again it is going to read the keyboard check that if the key is still pressed or not and if it is still pressed then it is going to accept the key otherwise it is going to reject the process okay so in this way the problem of the metal contact bouncing again and again that can be reduced by using the hardware part also and using the software debouncing also okay so this was the 
keyboard okay we have seen the internal circuit of the keyboard that what the keyboard consists of how the keys are pressed and how these keys are being identified by the microcontrollers now let's see the interfacing keyboard uh, circuit of the keyboard that how the keyboard is connected with the microcontroller what will be its communication circuit interfacing circuit called Now the keyboard when it is interfaced with the microcontroller it is connected with the input ports of the microcontroller okay so here if we are having keyboard in keyboard we have the keys okay so these keys are connected with the microcontroller in microcontroller we are having the input ports okay now we know that the keys are the mechanical switches okay so in the keyboard the keys will be connected with the input ports and keys are the mechanical switches now these mechanical switches they are arranged in two ways in the keyboard one way is the matrix form in the matrix form the switches can be present or another form is called the non matrix form so there are two ways in which the uh, mechanical switches they can be present in the keyboard let us see these two forms the matrix form and the non matrix form first of all we will see that how a non matrix keyboard it is interfaced with the microcontroller in the non matrix type keyboard those keys they are present in the simple form means that each input port line it is connected with each key okay suppose that there are eight keys in the keyboard so those eight keys would be connected with the eight lines of the input ports so every input line is connected with each key okay so here if we see the diagram for it this is our microcontroller 8051 in this 8051 we are having different ports we are using port a okay and here each port because each port is going to have eight lines over there so pa7 pa6 sorry it will start from 0 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 okay so here with every key okay so you can see that the each port line it is connected with the keys there are eight keys from 0 to 7 okay and whenever any key is pressed you can see that those port line will get activated okay so in this way when the 8051 it is going to read its port okay and at that port whatever the data it is getting according to that it will identify that which key is being pressed okay so number of keys is equal to 
number of port lines. If there are eight keys, then eight port lines are required. Now in this non-matrix type of keyboard, if you want to identify a key pressed, then how it is done? So here, to identify a key pressed, first of all, identify that whether a key is closed or not. Identify the key closure. After that, debouncing the key. Then, after that, encoding the key to an appropriate code. Now here, debouncing the key, it can be done either with the hardware debouncing can be used or software debouncing can be used. Okay. Now here, we have seen the hardware debouncing that how the hardware, with the help of hardware, how the key closure is being identified. Okay, now here you can see that whenever this key is closed, the circuit will be completed and the VCC voltage will be provided at that. This line will be at logic 1. Okay, now if we connect all these lines with a NAND gate here and how we are going to identify that whether the key is closed or not. Okay, so to identify the key closure, the all the lines will be connected with a NAND gate and the output of that NAND gate, if it is high, it means that key is closed. If it is low, it means that no key is being pressed. Okay, so if we connect all these with the NAND gate, let's see, these are extended. And all these lines will be connected as an input to a NAND gate. Okay. So here I have drawn this NAND gate. The input will be all the eight lines coming from the keys. Okay. And the output of this NAND gate will be a strobe signal. Now, when all keys are open, then the output of NAND gate is low. That means that STB bar, this signal will be activated okay this way this the output of NAND signal is going to low STB is going to be low okay now when any key is pressed output goes high okay that means STB bar signal it goes high so when all the keys are open the NAND the output of the NAND uh, gate is going to go low and this is STB strobe signal it is also going to be low and when the key is pressed the output of the NAND gate goes high the STB strobe signal goes high now to identify whenever this strobe signal is high it means that the key is pressed and we can use this strobe signal to interrupt the microcontroller so we can say that whenever this uh, strobe signal it goes high it means that key is pressed and then interrupt the microcontroller microcontroller is going to read that which key is being pressed and then it is going to encode the key to an appropriate code and appropriate operation will be taken
so in this way a non matrix type of keyboard okay that can be interfaced with the 8051 microcontroller we have seen that in the non matrix type of keyboard the number of keys is equal to the number of port lines okay so how many keys we want to interface according to that the number of port lines will be there okay if there are 8 keys then 8 port lines if there are 16 keys then 16 port lines will be required okay now the next type of keyboard is the matrix type of keyboard now as in the non matrix type the number of lines is equal to number of keys now as the number of keys is increasing the number of lines required is also increasing like 16 keys will require 16 lines if there are 32 keys then 32 lines will be require so the circuitry is increasing now to reduce those circuitry or the requirement for the input lines if we want to reduce that we can use the matrix type keyboard in this matrix type keyboard the keys are present in the form of rows and columns okay so suppose that eight keys are required eight keys are there so it can be arranged as a four cross four matrix if 16 keys are required then it can be arranged as 8 cross 8 matrix if 32 keys are required then 16 cross 16 matrix can be used okay in that there will be four rows and four columns let's see that how we can implement the eight keys there are four columns now there are four rows okay now if we connect them you can see 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 if we require only eight keys then this much part is enough for us if we require 16 keys then we can use two more lines okay two more rows can be used so we can get 16 keys 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 now how these keys will be implemented these are the switches for those keys so you can see there are total 16 keys here so with the combination of 4 cross 4 we can implement 16 keys okay so here we can have 3 2 1 0 here also we can have row 3 2 1 0 these are the columns and these are the rows okay now whenever any key is pressed so with the help of the row and the column combination we will be able to check or identify that this key is being pressed now let's see that how the 8051 microcontroller it can be interfaced with this matrix type of keyboard we have seen that in matrix type of keyboard the keys are arranged in the form of rows and columns okay in the form of uh, in the form of matrix they are present so when 8051 microcontroller is interfaced with such type of matrix keyboard then the rows are the return lines and column they correspond to the scan lines 
in 8051 we are having return lines and scan lines so rows will act as the return lines that is the input lines and columns they will act as the scan lines or the output lines okay so if we see the connection here these rows again we will have the four cross four matrix keys will be present here these will be connected with the input port a return lines these are row 3 2 1 and 0 these are the columns they are connected with the output port b scan lines now these are connected with a resistance and all these are connected with a power supply of plus 5 volts Now when a key is pressed, the corresponding row and column is high then it makes that column high and if vice versa so you can see here in the diagram that whenever any key is pressed this circuit is going to complete and the row and the column they are going to short with each other okay so whenever any key is pressed the corresponding row and column they become shorted so when they become shorted because here power supply is given to this row so corresponding column or the output line is also going to become high okay and the microcontroller it is going to read that output lines and then according to that it is going to identify that which key is being pressed okay now suppose that this key is being pressed so this line will be shorted now power supply is given to this so this line is already high the input line now the if this line is shorted then the second line it also becomes shorted okay so if this column becomes short then the microcontroller will get to know that this key is being pressed so let's see the process to identify if the key is pressed or if the key is pressed or not so first step is make all the columns zero okay so when all the columns are zero the microcontroller mean will get to know that all keys are activated okay now after that read the status of rows that is the return lines now if the status of the return line all lines are high it means no key is pressed
if any of the line is high sorry if any line is low it means that key is pressed so first step of interfacing is to identify that whether the key is pressed or not okay so how microcontroller identify it will make all the columns as zero so when all the columns are zero at output line scan lines it will be getting the output zero okay it means that all lines are activated all lines are shorted now it is going to check the return lines the input lines all the input lines are high because they are connected with the plus 5 volts power supply so when all the lines are high it means that no key is pressed okay because if key is pressed then the because in columns we are giving the input low so in the uh, input also at the in the rows also we will get uh, the low output okay because these lines will be shorted when the uh, key will be pressed now suppose that all the lines we are getting as high it means that no key is pressed suppose that this key is pressed this key is pressed so this line will be shorted so if it is low then at this line also we will get a low so by this the microcontroller will get to know that because this row 1 we are getting as the low input line then it means that a key has been pressed in this row okay now after identifying that the key is pressed or not next step will be debouncing the key now debouncing the key it can be done with the hardware or the software as we have discussed already now after this second step the third step will be to the identify that which key is pressed okay so third step will be identifying the pressed key now how it will be identify first of all activate the keys from one column by making one column line zero okay so what we will do we will activate one column at a time first of all we will activate the third column so third column will be activated by making all the lines as zero we are going to activate all the keys by providing low at this and all the remaining lines will be at logic 1 only the column number 3 line will be at logic 0 after that read the status of return lines now next read the status of the return lines zero on any return line it will indicate that that particular key is pressed how we will do that first of all we have make column 3 as low okay we will check that which of their return lines is zero okay so suppose that row one line is zero or it means it is low okay after that we will make row two lines as low in that we will not see that any of the lines is low in row 1 we will check that whether any return line is low or not we are not getting any row again we are getting this then 
in row number 0 we will make all the uh, the column will be make and low and then return lines will be checked. So the case in which we are getting the return line also as low and the column line also as low in that case the key is pressed and we will identify that which key is pressed. In first day we were not identifying, we were just identifying that whether key is pressed or not. In this third step we are identifying that which key is being pressed. Okay. So this is how the interfacing of a matrix keyboard is done with the 8051 microcontroller. So here we have seen in this video interfacing keyboard with 8051 keyboards can be of two types matrix keyboard and non matrix keyboard in matrix keyboard we have seen that the requirement of the lines is reduced whereas in non matrix type the number of keys is equal to number of input lines So when the number of keys is less then we can use the non matrix keyboard but if the number of keys is more then matrix keyboard is used and we have seen that how they are interfaced with the 8051 microcontroller how the key identify is the key which is pressed that is identified okay so i hope that now this topic interfacing keyboard with the 8051 microcontroller it is now clear to you thank you